This is the video for our syllabus for BioSci 140 Fall 2021. We'll run through some of this fairly quickly. Uh, the course information, this is BioSci 140. It's a five unit course. The course description says the lectures are designed to help students understand the physiological mechanisms of the human body. Special emphasis will be given to regulatory mechanisms on the cell and organ system level, employing chemical, mathematical, and physical principles. The laboratory section will focus on the application, analysis, and evaluation of major physiological principles using molecular techniques, bioelectronics, computer analysis, and or live organisms. The class hours and location. Uh, our class is largely asynchronous online. There are no on-campus meetings, but we do have a scheduled online meeting on Tuesdays from 7 to 8, 25 p.m. or Wednesdays from 8 to 9, 25 a.m. based on your section. Most content will be posted, i.e. not delivered live and students must meet regular deadlines for assignments, but can access coursework at times of their convenience. That's one of the strengths of having an online course that's asynchronous, is you can do the work whenever you feel it is best for you. We will have major assessments, which would be quizzes and exams, that have to be comp completed on particular dates. Those will be Wednesdays. And those must be completed between 10 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. You can see the calendar for the exact dates. Uh, most exams are given in two parts, a written part and a multiple choice part. And sometimes each part takes up to, you know, an hour or a little more. Um, so you might need two and a half hours on a Wednesday to take both sections of the exam. You do have some prerequisites for this course. Uh, you need BioSci 139, which is human anatomy, or BioSci 120, which is the anatomy and physiology at BVC, or the equivalent. And you need some sort of chemistry, uh, 107, 108, 109, or 120 at DVC. Uh, your high school chemistry could also uh, apply. We have a couple textbooks you're responsible for getting. Required textbooks uh, are for lecture and laboratory. Uh, we use a what they call an open educational resource book or OER, it's OpenStax Anatomy and Physiology. Some of you might have a copy of that anyway because I know there's a couple uh, anatomy instructors at DVC that use it. Uh, it it's a great book um, except for the fact that it's got anatomy in it, um, which is good if you're in anatomy class, not so good if you're in physiology class, I think. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's excellent and for the price. You can't beat it. Um, we also need a, another book uh, in the bookstore. It's called Hoffman, which is me, um, but I didn't write it. I just ordered it. Um, but it's called Human Physiology Lab BioSci 140L DVC Biology, which doesn't make any sense for a bunch of reasons. And there is no such thing as 140L. It's actually uh, a laboratory guide for human physiology. Uh, written by a uh, professor named Fox down in he's at Pierce Community College down in Southern California. So we uh, what we've done is we've got a custom version of that. So that's why you see it in the bookstore. It is the cheapest place to get it, and it only has the information that we use in it, which is the reason why we get it cheap. It's still not really cheap. It's a little less than a hundred dollars, but uh, it's very difficult to find the, the Fox Laboratory book online now. So you need that, and you also need the Physiology Lab Supplement. Uh, it was revised in 2020, although you could use an older version if you had one. Uh, some students like the hard copy, which you can get from the bookstore for about 25 bucks, or I post a free PDF version of that uh, on, on the class website uh, for Canvas. So you can get your OpenStax book uh, for free. You can get your... If you have a PDF version, that's also on Canvas, or you can just literally Google OpenStax and anatomy and physiology and download it. Uh, if you want a hard copy of that, you can buy them from Amazon for about 50 bucks. You can also rent them uh, for a little less. Uh, the Physiology Lab Supplement, if you get the PDF version from 
the Canvas site. It's free as well. Um, so you can get by with just about 100 bucks for the lab book that you have to have. And all, all these you should have. But the lab book and something you have to have. The OpenStax book straight for reference. And it's free. There's no reason why you shouldn't have it probably. Um, we'll have some office hours this year. The green are email and the purple are Zoom. So my email office hours are 8.30 to 10 or 9.30 on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, you can email me. I very few students actually email me during those office hours. Um, you can email me anytime, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, during the email office hours, the response will probably be a little quicker, um, but probably not by much, to be honest. Uh, on Tuesday also evening in the purple, we have a Zoom office hour, and then Wednesday morning we have a Zoom office hour. Um, note that's immediately preceding and immediately after our uh, mandatory course meeting, depending on your section, you're going to either be Tuesday night or Wednesday morning for that. So you're either at uh, 7 to 8.30 ish or um, 8 to 9.30 ish on Wednesday. So we'll stay online or come online a little early and talk to students. Uh, grading was probably pretty important for a lot of students and here are the the point values, there's 800 points total in the course. Uh, to get an A, you need 90% or 720 points, and 80%, 640 points to get a B, uh, about 65% or 520 points to get a C. Um, and then, you know, a D goes down to 440, and then anything below 440 is considered an F. How you earn those points, those 800 points total, so we have four lecture exams at 100 points each, that's 400 points. We have a final uh, lecture exam that's comprehensive. It's 100 points. We have four laboratory quizzes at 25 points each. That's 100 points. So right there, 75% of your course is course grade, I guess the best way to say it. 600 out of 800 points or 75% are exams. So you need to sort of figure out how to do well on exams. We have what are called checkups. Uh, checkups are... Uh, quizzes, uh, most of them are online, uh, where you get to take it and we'll just take your percentage of all the checkups and then adjust it to 75 points. So um, I forget exactly how many points we have. I for, uh, did not have it in the um, thing. I don't know why I think it's, I don't look, well, we'll, you'll look at it. It's in the um, grade worksheet. Uh, but, uh, you know, so if you get 90% of that, you would end up with, you know, basically 68 points or 90% of 75. Um, if you got 99%, you probably get those 75 group points and so on. So you just get whatever percentage on the checkups uh, is what you get for this score. So they're worth a lot less um, points per se. They're not actually worth class points. And they're usually worth, you know, well, half a third of a point ish somewhere in that neighborhood so they're not nearly as worth as many points we also have what are called pre assignments pre um, those are preparatory report exercises and what they are is they help prepare you for the lab report so that's what we call them pre because they're before um, we're worth 25 uh, there's five of those worth five points each the laboratory report is competitively graded. That's worth 50 points. And you have a physiology project that is also worth 50 points. Half of that is a physiology paper, and the other half is a video that you make on that paper that you write. Um, paper will be 6 to 12 pages. You get to choose any topic related to physiology. Um, and then once you write the paper, you'll make a video. There's more information uh, on Canvas, but that's kind of basically how it is. So that's how we can earn points and that's how the grades will be assigned. Some important about the important information about the lecture exams. Um, they'll emphasize the lecture material. Um, you're responsible for stuff that's covered in the notes, um, even if it's not discussed in class. Uh, I post my lecture notes. So you have access to that. Um, and you should be looking at that. Uh, but most of the stuff should be covered in the, the, the videos that we uh, have posted uh, online and the PowerPoint slides from it. Um, the one thing that 
I find uh, students have the biggest uh, problem with the biggest challenge for them, if you want to say it that way, uh, in terms of physiology is understanding and being able to apply the details. And that's where a lot of students end up having problems. So it's the details that really matter. So, you know, one of the problems with studying the PowerPoint slides, like a lot of students initially do, is that PowerPoint slides do not have the same type of details that the notes would um, that I talk about. So when you are preparing for the lecture exams, when you're watching those online lectures through YouTube, you need to be taking notes. Uh, the great thing about YouTube is you can speed it up, you can slow it down, you can go backwards, you can go forwards, right? Using the arrow keys, an example, um, on your keyboard if you're using a computer, which I recommend uh, if you have access to it. Uh, you know, push the forward arrow key, it goes forward five seconds. Put the back, back arrow key, key, it goes back five seconds. So a lot of, you know, other shortcuts on the, the YouTube that you can kind of manipulate the, the time with. You know, you can make it, you know, go one and a half time or one and a quarter time or go slow it down if you need to, right? So, you know, the better notes you take the first time through, the much better off I think you'll be because it's in those notes and in that lecture material where the details are going to be provided. And those are the details you have to know and apply on an exam. The format for the exams, again, this is lecture exams. Uh, we'll have some multiple choice matching type things. There'll be some written things as well. You know, probably not too many fill-ins because they just don't work great on Canvas. Um, but there'll be some short answer essay, diagram, calculation, integration type questions um, that you'll handwrite and then upload to Canvas um, during the exam period. Um, so that'll be part of it. And then there'll be the you know the classical multiple choice type things you'll have as well. Um, together, those will comprise the 100 points. For the lecture exams, I'm pretty sure we'll go like 75 points for the multiple choice part and 25 points for the, the other part. Uh, we'll see over the semester, but that'll probably be the general scheme for, for most of them. Um, obviously, lecture exams will cover lecture material, hence that's why they're called lecture exams. Uh, you'll also be responsible for the material covered in the notes, like I said before. Um, but, you know, if you take good notes and you incorporate them into the post-it notes that I have, then you should have a perfect study guide uh, for the exam. Um, you should use your textbooks for reference. Uh, they're a great reference, but I don't know if you need to study them because uh, there's a lot of things, like I said, especially the anatomy portions in the textbooks that uh, are good, but uh, maybe not necessary for you to study for the lecture exam. Um, and the PowerPoint slides, I think, help, but again, they don't have the detail that you want, but they do have some diagrams and pictures that may help you understand that. So you should look at them, but uh, your main mode of study um, should certainly incorporate the, the lecture notes. Um, we'll have questions that will ask you to synthesize and apply concepts to new scenario, uh, scenarios. So, uh, you know, to be honest, I used to teach anatomy. And I have always thought that if you're really good at memorization in anatomy, you can get an A. Um, that is probably not the case uh, for the vast majority of people in physiology. You're going to have to be able to apply uh, and synthesize concepts. Um, all exams will be given through Canvas. There will be timed. There will be a scheduled date. So they're scheduled on Wednesdays for this semester. Um, to accommodate the varying schedules, you'll be available from 10 a.m. and must be submitted and completed by 11.59 p.m. That gives you a 14-hour window in which to take exams that are usually a total of uh, less than two and a half hours. Uh, so, um, you know, they have to be completed in a single sitting. Once you start the timer, you can't pause it. You can't, it's just, it keeps going, so make sure you're, you know, have that time available. You're not going to be interrupted. Um, again, most of the time it will be split into two portions, uh, usually an objective portion that is the multiple choice part and then um, the handwritten subjective portion as well. Uh, resources, and this is true of pretty much everything we do in this, this class when we're doing it online, is uh, calculators and course materials can be used on Canvas uh, exams. So uh, you should have a calculator. 
You can have your course materials, any notes that you've taken, any um, you know diagrams you made, any any of that information you can have with you. Um, but you cannot use other people, including your classmates, and you can't use outside materials like the internet. You can't Google anything. Um, if there's evidence of that, <clears throat> it'll constitute an act of academic dis dishonesty, and you'll we'll be penalized. You know, for those of you trying to get into professional school, which is probably most of them, all of you, uh, when you're done with this class, you know, you certainly don't want to uh, have that academic dishonesty hanging over your head. So, uh, you know, one of the strengths of um, being able to take classes online is that you'll have access to information where you wouldn't normally do it in a face-to-face -face classroom. Uh, you know, I, I would never let you use your notes on an exam in a face-to-face -face classroom, but here, uh, you do. So I think one of the key elements that you really probably want to start from the very beginning is make sure you're organized, right? Um, you're not going to have time on exams to look stuff up um, for the most part. Uh, we do make them go fairly quickly, uh, but you probably will have time to go back and verify a few things um, if you finish the exam quick enough. Uh, I think that sometimes students for the first exam don't finish uh, the exam on time, um, and that's because they try to look too many things up. Um, so you're going to be expected to have that level of knowledge you would in a, in a regular classroom, um, in a face-to-face -face class, but you need to make sure that um, uh, you, know, you have that knowledge, uh, but also you have access to some of those resources that you wouldn't normally have in the classroom. Uh, also, we generally don't give makeup exams. Um, for a variety of reasons, um, so they typically won't be considered. Uh, we also have a comprehensive final exam. Um, oh, forgot to change. Oh, no, I did. It's fine. Um, it's Wednesday, December 8th, uh, so that will be the last time. Once you finish that exam, you will be free from this class, right? And so it'll be very similar to the other lecture exams. We'll talk more about it, obviously, when we get there um, later on in the semester. We also have some laboratory quizzes. Uh, laboratory quizzes will emphasize laboratory material, right? So any material we posted and covered, discussed in lab will be in lab. And likewise, just kind of mentioned, the lecture material will cover the lecture material. We will not have any lecture material on lab or vice versa unless we've already talked about it in that arena. So as an example, uh, in the lecture later on the semester, we'll have a lecture on blood. We'll talk a lot about red blood cells and, and things like that. Well, in lab, we'll have a lab on blood and talk about red blood cells. And that information is pretty much exactly the same for some of it uh, from lecture and lab. So since we talked about it in lecture to be in lecture and talk about it in lab to be in lab, right? But, you know, it's only because it's already been in that uh, scope and content area. Um, as an example, the, the second lab will talk about um, homeostasis and uh, negative feedback in terms of a water bath. In lecture, we'll talk about homeostasis and negative feedback, but we'll never mention a water bath. So in lab, for the lab exam, you might have to discuss something to do with the water bath because we talked about that in terms of negative feedback and homeostasis. In lecture, I'll never ask you about a water bath because that didn't come up in the lecture. Uh, so just, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, lecture stays in lecture, lab stays in lab, and that'll help narrow your focus in terms of how much material you have to study. Um, we will not have a lecture in a lab. I call them lab quizzes because they're 25 points, okay? Uh, and the lectures are called lecture exams because they're 100 points. We won't have one of those the same week. So the lab quiz will always be the week before the lecture exam. Um, so you only have one major thing to do each week. Uh, in terms of an assessment, you'll also have some uh, uh, other things that'll have to be due in terms of um, uh, different assignments that you'll turn in uh, again on mostly Wednesdays, although we'll see that's not even true there as well. So the format will be similar. Um, obviously not as many questions because there's not as much material because they're not worth as many points. Uh, but there'll be some multiple choice matching. There'll be some written. Uh, we'll often divide it into two, although we may not do that for every exam. 
Uh, the quizzes will emphasize the resources, the laboratory supplement, the lab manual, the videos, uh, the stuff we see on Canvas, etc. Um, you're responsible for all the signed information. So the textbook, the handouts, the, the homework, all of those. Uh, I will try to design the exam so that the questions cover the lab exercise and related content, and you'll be rewarded for studying that stuff. Um, like the lecture, some will require interpretation analysis. I'll ask you to you know, analyze experimental results. I'll ask you to calculate things. And again, um, rote memorization probably will not be sufficient to, to earn an A grade. Uh, uh, the lab exams will be administered in a similar format. Um, we don't al allow the exams to be started until after 10 a.m., and that's because we have the office hours and um, uh, uh, mandatory meeting from 8 to 10 basically on Wednesdays and then that'll give you an opportunity anybody who's you know attends that to then start the, the lecture exams or the lab quizzes or, you know after 10 a.m. Uh, and again just like before everything has to be submitted prior to 11:59 p.m. not started but completed and submitted so if you have a, an hour exam, right, you can't start it after 10.59 p.m. Otherwise, you're not going to get sufficient time. And uh, you just make sure that, that, that you uh, pay attention to that. Because uh, sometimes students think, as long as I start by that time, you no, know, it has to be turned in by that time. Um, uh, the resources allowable are the same as we had before, uh, where you can use your class notes and materials that are posted on Canvas. You can use calculators, um, but you can't use your classmates and you can't, or anybody else, uh, and you can't have uh, outside materials such as the internet, Google, things like that. Uh, makeups, again, not generally not given. I mentioned the checkups before. So we call them checkups, and basically they're homework and short Canvas quizzes. Um, you'll have these various assignments throughout the semester. Uh, pretty much weekly. Um, sometimes there'll be uh, relatively few questions and sometimes there'll be very many questions. Uh, it depends on the section or sections you're being uh, tested on as to how big it is and, and things like that. I think we have one that's only like six or eight questions. I think we have one that's like 30 something questions. So they will vary in length um, throughout the semester. And the idea is that um, they help encourage self-assessment, that uh, studies show that students learn better when they have these frequent low-cost quizzes. Okay, um, And so uh, we call them checkups because they're checking up your knowledge, if you want to think about it that way. Um, and like I said, there's going to be a lot more than just uh, 75 points on those. There'll be a, a couple hundred points at least. And what we'll do is we'll look at your percentage on those and then give you that percentage of 75 um, in terms of that. So if you scored 80% on all the checkups, um, there should be about, I plan on 269 points. Um, you can see it down here uh, this semester. Uh, so if you got 80% of those, right, which would be what, uh, 214 or something, um, then you would get 80% of 75 points, which would be 60. So you would get 60 out of 75 uh, for your checkup score uh, this semester. So, you know, take them seriously. They don't typically, to be honest, don't help students a lot because um, they're often reflective of students' grade and effort uh, throughout the semester. But they really can't hurt students if you forget to do them. Um, they're only available in a you know, given window amount of time. And if that window closes, then you won't be able to, to do them. I mentioned the Physiology Project. It's a paper and video. Uh, again, you get to choose some aspect related to human physiology and cover it relatively in, in more depth. Um, you'll do a research paper that is 6 to 12 pages. It, clearly communicates, you know, college-level physiological and scientific information. And then 
that's due one week, and the week after, you're going to summarize those key physiological and scientific findings uh, from the report in a five to six minute video presentation, um, incorporating some sort of visual aids. Uh, each portion of that is worth 25 points for a total of 50 points. I mentioned the uh, prepar preparatory report exercises. You may see me refer to them as JALR. Um, that was a prior term we used, and I just switched this semester because that was hard to say and things like that. I think I changed, you know, most of the things that had it. But if you see JALR, um, then just think pre. And what it does is it helps you learn how to read and write and communicate and analyze scientific findings. And the reason why that's important is you're going to have to do a lab report uh, later on the semester. Um, and so these little exercises are going to help you do that. Um, they are relatively painless. And uh, by completing them, you've done a solid amount of work in terms of getting your laboratory report uh, completed. Uh, before we started using these, the, the lab report scores were fairly poor. Um, and then uh, they boosted significantly uh, when we started doing this. So there's five of these assignments, and they're worth, you know, five points each for a total of 25 points. Those will be turned in like the second and third week of school, so you don't have a lot of turnaround time. So you need to get those started fairly early. Uh, then you'll do a lab report, which is due um, sometime in October. I don't know, usually it's right around Halloween, unfortunately. Um, and so the lab report, oh wow, it's due a lot earlier, um, is due you know, at the beginning of October. So again, you don't have a whole lot of time to, to write that up. And uh, just from experience, uh, it'll probably, if you think about it right now, say like how long is that lab report gonna, gonna take to write? Get a number in your head in hours, and then you probably wanna triple it, and that's probably what it really will be uh, for you. As part of that, and uh, you'll have to use Turnitin, which is what they call an originality checker. Um, what you'll do is you'll turn your lab report in into a portal on Canvas that will have Turnitin check it, and it will look at the similarity of your writing to their database. And it has to be less than 30%. Um, to be considered for a grade. Um, so, you know, it checks previously reviewed papers through it. It checks, um, you know, papers on the internet and, you know, scholarly research and all sorts of stuff. Um, so you want to get that done a little bit early and start, you know, checking to make sure that yours is uh, not uh, more than 30%. Uh, and 30% is considered the acceptable where you're not uh, plagiarizing information. Um, so, and some students have a little bit of issues with that. So, you want to try to not have to worry about it at the last minute. Uh, late assignments. Uh, I don't like, you know, things to be late, and um, uh, there's a bunch of reasons for it. Uh, but uh, when you get too far behind in this class, it becomes difficult, if not impossible, to catch up. So, um, there are some uh, times you can have a late assignment. You'll see we have a schedule that you can look at um, that has the due dates, what we call a grace period end date and an expiration end date. Um, not every assignment has this, and we don't do this on exams either, but the due date is the day that it is uh, recommended to be turned in um, or the only day you can turn it in. Um, like an exam would have a due date on some Wednesday, and that's the only day you can do it, uh, as an example. Um, but, you know, the idea of that was to uh, put together a schedule that was reasonable, that sort of reflected a face-to-face -face course, where we're meeting, um, you know, uh, two or maybe even four times a week, uh, where you had opportunities, you know, to turn things in in class, but not you know, a whole lot of other opportunities. Well, since we're online, do I really need something on Wednesday? 
yeah, your lab report's due on Wednesday, but I do I really need it on Wednesday? No. Nah. So I give you a, a grace period on, on some of these um, assignments. And so when the grace period ends, right, that end date, um, that is when it is actually due where you can still get full credit for it. If it has a penalty date, then between the grace period and the expiration period, right, that's the penalty period. And during the penalty period, uh, you will be penalized a half a percent per hour. It seems really severe, and it is pretty severe. It's 12% per day. Um, so make sure that, um, you know, you stay out of that because you don't want to lose points. And Canvas does it automatically. Um, once it hits the expiration date, it cannot be turned in for credit after that. So, uh, and like I said, lecture exams and laboratory quizzes are not allowed to be late um, and only be available on those given Wednesdays uh, between 10 a.m. and must be completed by 11.59 p.m. Score corrections. Sometimes students want me to look at, um, sorry, uh, some assignment they don't think was graded correctly or things like that. Um, typically, you have five days within the posting of the grades where you need to ask me to, to look at it again. Uh, otherwise, you lose that opportunity. Extra credit. There'll be no individual extra credit. Yeah, we might do a few things here and there that add extra credit opportunities to the, the course. And, you know, now is the time to start thinking about your grades because you're going to be stuck with the total amount of points you're in the course for better or for worse. So, um, you know, you can't say, hey, James, you know, I, I need nine more points to get an A. Can I do another paper or something? And the answer is no, you're, you're stuck with the, the grade you earn. So um, just know that. Although, again, there might be some opportunity for extra credit or, you know, maybe I have an extra question on an exam or something where, you know, instead of being out of 100 points, it's out of 102 or something. Um, so there might be a little bit extra credit, but everybody has that same opportunity uh, to do that. Uh, one of the hard parts of teaching an online class is making sure students have this active participation, and that's essential for your success. Um, and so you're expected to stay substantially active in the course, which means you're regularly logging into Canvas and completing assignments and doing the things that, that you're supposed to do. Uh, sometimes it's difficult for me to tell if you haven't been there for a week. I actually can see your cumulative time you've been on Canvas the last time you logged in. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're expected to, to, to do that. Um, if you miss an appreciable amount of time, I do have the ability to drop you. Um, I won't, probably. Um, and, uh, I, you know, if you want to quit attending class, you need to take care of the uh, paperwork yourself. Uh, but, uh, you know, make sure that if they're going to be inactive for a while, let me know. And obviously, excuses would be an illness, um, you know, major surgery, something like that. You miss a day or two, you know, religious holidays or, you know, college-sponsored events, deaths in the family. Those are all, you know, legitimate reasons. So, you know, let me know about stuff. But, you know, I don't think any of those except maybe, you know, you know unfortunate prolonged illness where that would, you know, extend into a, you know, a longer period of time. All right. I just mentioned that, you know, you're expected to, to drop uh, yourself if, if you once you're enrolled. One of the class policies that we're trying to kind of foster here is uh, working together and building an inclusive and supportive community in the class. Um, we'll have a class discord. Uh, we'll have some class uh, discussions potentially. And I want to have a respectful, safe, friendly, interactive environment for people. Hopefully it's interesting and fun as well. Um, but you know, I just want everybody to feel comfortable with each other in class. Uh, science shows that people learn better in an environment with these characteristics. So, you know, let's have an environment that's, you know, we create and support, um, you know, this environment where everyone uh, feels comfortable and can reach their full potential, okay? Um, so every student in this classroom, regardless of their personal history or any identity categories, is a member of this group, okay? Um, they have... A, Important experiences if they want to share with us, then and they're relative to the class, that's great. 
Uh, no student in this class is ever expected or believed to speak for all members of the group um, or the class. Um, the other thing is in this class you have the right to determine your own identity. Um, you have the right to be called by whatever name you wish. You have the right to refer to whatever pronouns you wish and to adjust those at any point in time. So when you have uh, our Zoom meeting um, you can put on your screen whatever name you want as long as, you know, it's uh, acceptable in terms of um, uh, community standards, I guess, would be the way to, to, to phrase that, right? So, you know, you, you're going to have to be able to be identified um, by me for attendance purposes at some point in time. Uh, we'll figure out how to do that. But if you want to, you know, put something else down or, uh, you know, a nickname or something, you know, that's fine. Um, if there's any barriers to your learning, you know, let me know. We'll try to, you know, see what we can do with it. Um, and, uh, you know, to contact me and, and, you know, don't for, worry about the only reprisal or anything. Um, Let's try not to have disruptive behavior. I really haven't had this issue in a long, long time and haven't yet had experienced this with uh, the online courses. Our students have largely been great. Um, but, you know, I don't make me restrict you from participating or dropping you if that behavior exists. There's certainly college policies on disruptive behavior if you want to look at them, but just, you know, don't. And things will be fine. Um, I will have lots of course communication with you. Many of you will go, oh my God, another email, another announcement. But I think, you know, these things are important um, and you're responsible for any announcement made in Canvas or through email. So if you're not forwarding your Canvas email to your personal account, you might want to think about doing that um, so that uh, you have access to that information. Sometimes there's a change or an addition or a clarification right before an exam, and you probably want that information so that you can best prepare for it. Ultimately, the responsibility is yours, but I will try to keep you updated on course content and due dates and things like that. Um, Keep a calendar, and I think the best calendar I'll show you later, um, and it's called the most important calendar for this course, um, and uh, I think that will really help because that shows all of the things you need to submit or the assignments that you have or the assessments that you have in this course that have a point value so you know when they're due and when you should be working on them. Uh, I will, like I said, send a lot of Canvas announcements. Um, sometimes they'll be on Canvas itself, and sometimes they'll be email. Uh, so make sure you stay on top of that. Uh, speaking of email, uh, I know some instructors prefer it this way, but I strongly prefer you don't use Canvas. Okay? There's a bunch of problems with Canvas, the, there's a number of them, but one of the major issues, if you email me from Canvas and say, hey, professor, what's this? Can you explain this? And I want to attach something on that email. I can't do it. Um, it'll let me do it and it'll let me send it to you, but it'll never send you the, the, the attachment. So I much prefer you use some other email, your personal email if you want, or the inside email from Canvas, I'm not Canvas, from uh, the college district's fine too. Uh, hold on, let me pause this. I'm getting feedback. So I strongly prefer you not using the Canvas in inbox for um, any purpose. Uh, for email, you know, you can ask any question you want, but sometimes it's harder to ask, answer different questions. Um, uh, you know, content questions work well. Uh, you know, try to have a professional tone, um, and, you know, my response time is within 24 hours, Monday through Thursday, um, and if you send them after Thursday, you know, you can expect an answer the following Monday. In reality, it's often, uh, you know, minutes, certainly usually hours in that day. Um, I often check email and respond whenever I see it. So, 
Um, it's not too bad. And email is not a bad way, especially in an online course, to get some information. Uh, for Zoom, we'll have required and optional Zoom meetings. Required Zoom meetings, again, uh, we'll post the schedule. Depends on your section. Um, the uh, section, what is it, 8446 would be at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. And section 2257 or 2683 would be at 8 a.m. on Wednesdays. Um, because the district now makes us password, makes us do something to the Zoom, um, there's a couple options, a waiting room, password protect, or sign in. Uh, it seems like password protect's the best way to do it. Um, so uh, all of our meetings will have the same basic link. You can see it down here. And the password will always be physio. All right, so physio. Um, each Zoom meeting will have a specific link. I suspect link for one meeting would be good for a link of another meeting. Um, but, uh, you know, I have posted those on Canvas. They're also posted in a couple other places. I did not post them specifically here. Um, and those might change because as you make new meetings or reschedule meetings, then Canvas, that cannot Canvas, Zoom generates a complete uh, new uh, password and link uh, to get to this meeting. So hopefully we'll be able to use the same ones for the entire semester. And those are posted on Canvas. I just finished that uh, earlier today. Um, I talked about the books a little bit. Not much else to talk about. Uh, you have a reference textbook, the OpenStax Anatomy and Physiology book. It's free. Um, you can download it. Uh, there's also a free Kindle version at Amazon if you prefer that. Um, or you can get print copies at Amazon or our bookstore for about 50 bucks. Uh, if you love print copies, then you know, it might be worth the investment. If you don't, not sure you're going to read it much, and probably just get the PDF file and look at it when you need it. Uh, you also need what's called the supplement. Uh, I've posted that as a PDF on Canvas. Hard copies can be purchased from the bookstore for about 25 bucks if you prefer the hard copy. You're not turning anything in from it, so it's up to you. And then the big one that students have the most issue with is the lab manual, which I'll typically call Fox. Um, it's this white cover, spiral bound book. Um, and it's uh, costing, I think, $93 or something um, on, at the bookstore. But if you want the full version at Amazon, it's you know, 180 most of the time, 200, 220, 250. It's really expensive. So for you know 100 bucks, you can get the two freebies and and the uh, lab manual from the bookstore. You'll be pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to read all this, but uh, you know you should have some required computer skills that you're comfortable using for an online course. Again, email use is very important. Uh, figuring out Canvas is important, so you should take a look at that. Uh, you will have to view lectures and other videos online, typically through YouTube, although you can certainly do it through Canvas. There'll be links. Uh, you'll have to view course material, whether it's Word or PowerPoint or PDF format. You're going to have to use a word processor and data processing software uh, to write papers, so whether it's uh, you know Google or um, Word. Um, all Students uh, that are registered at DVC can access and download uh, Microsoft uh, Office uh, for free. Um, and there's instructions here on how to do it. Uh, you probably want to be able to have a microphone for your computer and built in one's fine. Um, so if you want to talk to me in Zoom, especially for office hours. Um, and then, you know, it would be nice to have a camera, but uh, if you did, that's fine. Um, uh, but and if you have a camera, you're certainly welcome to, to hide your video or mute your microphone. I'm afraid to ask you to mute your microphone uh, for the most part, so there's not feedback and extraneous noise. Um, you should have high-speed internet access, right? Especially for exams, right? You need a 
a uh, safe uh, internet connection that's quick and reliable for taking exams especially. Um, some people do like taking them at, at cafes and restaurants. Uh, almost every McDonald's and every Starbucks uh, have uh, free Wi-Fi, but access to those may be limited due to the pandemic. Um, the other thing is, and I mentioned this before, your Canvas classroom will be much better on a PC, and you should store everything that you can on it. So, you know, I, I have a lot of information posted on Canvas. Some of it is in two different forms. So, in many instances, not all for various reasons, I'll post a Word file and a PDF file. Or as an example, for the lecture slides, I have a PowerPoint file and then a PDF file. And it depends on what you want to do with it. Some students like the PowerPoint and they like to modify it and play around with it. And other students like the PDF because you can read that on pretty much any device. So it's up to you as, as what you want to do. But I suggest that you download it. So if you ever lose the internet connection, you always have access to your materials. And it's just easier to get. Lots of resources on Canvas. You can read them. Okay, I think hopefully most of you are uh, proficient in Canvas now. A um, bunch of other learning technology sites. Um, a couple other things that uh, I want to point out. Um, we do have the Biological and Health Science Tutoring Lab. It's in LHS 116, and I'm not sure exactly what schedule they're doing this semester. There are a few courses meeting on campus in person. Uh, I think there's literally one Bio 102 section that meets completely on campus. There are a couple labs that meet on campus, but um, when we had to schedule this course, it was literally back in February, and we did not know the course of the pandemic we did not know how many people would be vaccinated we did not know what the classroom size would be we didn't know what the appropriate protocols were for safety as a matter of fact we still really don't have all those worked out as well as i think we should and so we went with the most conservative route when we scheduled the BioSci 140 courses for the fall, and that was to have them completely online. Um, probably looking at what's going on right now, probably not such a bad idea. Um, but uh, the tutoring lab did have Zoom hours uh, last year, so I suspect they'll have some more this uh, this year as well. Uh, there's also NetTutor. I think we have that again this year, and that's a free online tutoring. Um, there's some other important links, um, counseling, um, important to look at your progress, especially for most of you that are moving on to professional schools. Uh, basic needs, um, if you have uh, any uh, uh, need for uh, you know, food or housing or health resources, uh, we have access to those on campus now. We have a, a food bank. Um, there's you know a bunch of other services available, so you can look at that. Uh, we have the um, DSS program that some of you might be in. If you are, right, then contact me and let me know what uh, what you need. Um, we have the Academic Support Center, or ASK, um, that can help navigate these support services as well. Um, again, if you are working with a DSS counselor, uh, please inform me as soon as possible so we can um, start working on, on what you need. Uh, I won't spend much time on the academic integrity. Um, don't cheat. It's not worth it in the long run. Um, take your education seriously. And here's examples of what academic dishonesty, things like that. Uh, for class philosophy, Online courses, much to the chagrin of students, actually take as much time or more time than a face-to-face -face course. Uh, 
in a face-to-face -face course, we would meet 162 hours over a 16-week semester, which is actually over 10 hours a week. In addition, you're supposed to spend a couple hours outside of class for every in-class hour, although it depends on whether it's lab or lecture. So you're talking about working on this class 15 to 25 hours a week and maybe even more depending on the time of the semester. So budget, you know, about five hours a week for, you know, to watch those videos. You know, sometimes we have a lot of them, sometimes not as much. A couple hours a week for lab assignments, a couple hours a week to take those online quizzes and things. And another five hours a week of non-mandated time to just, you know, say, oh, I need to work more on this and more on that. Um, so, uh, you know, plan on spending some time on the course because you probably uh, will need to. Some advice and expectations. Take responsibility for your education. This is a demanding course. I'm not going to tell you any different. It covers a broad broad range of topics. I have a high expectation for you. And one of the reasons I do is I believe that you can meet my expectations and semester after semester, most students do. Um, I set a high level learning threshold for my class, um, but they're college level expectations. So I'm not asking you to do anything that you shouldn't. Um, you need to get through this class to move on for most of you into what your preferred professional uh, trajectory will be. Um, so you need to recognize and accept uh, responsibility for your own learning and you know, make sure that you understand that grades are earned and you'll get out of the course what you put into the course. Um, so, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, try to challenge yourself. Um, you know, don't get discouraged. There'll be times where you don't understand anything. It doesn't make any sense. And what often happens in this class is all of a sudden it clicks and you go, oh, my God, why was that so hard yesterday? Um, there is sometimes and uh, this ambiguity that, that crops up in this course, and sometimes it's for various reasons, and sometimes it's just the way science works. Um, and you have to live with that, um, and it can be frustrating. Um, you know, the world's not black and white, so, you know, if, if you make a mistake, um, it's okay. Uh, learn from it, okay? Okay, what was the error you made? How can you prevent doing it? it next time and you know see these errors as opportunities to learn rather than failure as an example that's what those checkups are for the idea of taking a checkup quiz is hey you know what it's only about a third of a point so if you miss it there it's better than missing it on an exam where it might be worth a couple points um, so uh, you know it's an opportunity to kind of see where you have areas that could be worked on further and then study those. Um, learn how you learn. Uh, all biological phenomena exhibit some sort of diversity, and uh, learning is something that is very personal, right? Hopefully, you have your own learning style that you understand right now, and you know you might want to find some strategies that work well for you. Um, you know, get scientific experiment with it. Say, oh. Maybe I'll try this for this exam. And if it, that doesn't quite work out, figure out, okay, what seemed to work for you, what didn't, and then change it. You know, study to learn and not memorize. And I mentioned this a couple of times. Rote memorization typically will not get you through this course like it would in, in, in some anatomy courses. Um, you know, you're going to be asked to think, so you're going to be using critical thinking skills. Um, we're going to try to prepare you for that. We're going to try to help you do that. We're going to try to teach you how to do that, you know, but uh, it'll go a long way towards that effort for yourself and your success if you engage with the content, you pay attention, you're attentive, uh, you take good notes, and you actively participate. 
If something's not clear, then review it, figure out why not. Um, come to my office hours, ask questions, ask your lab partners, go to the Discord server, you know, show up for tutoring. All of those things should help, right? Form study groups. Maybe, you know, there's a message board in uh, Discord. Say, so, hey, anybody want to study uh, in a group, right? And then maybe, you know, get together with, with you know, those people. Something along the lines, you know, anything that that's helps active learning is going to help. I think, in terms of your success in this course. One of the best ways to teach, and I hear this all the time from our peer tutors, is, oh man, I really thought I knew physiology until I had a tutor, and now I really understand it. So telling something, teaching something to someone else is really going to help you understand. Um, one of the big issues that students tend to have in this class is the idea of time management. Uh, you don't have an unlimited time amount of time in, you know, the week. You have to sleep, right? And some of you don't have a whole lot of other responsibilities, but many of you do. You know, some of you are parents or caregivers. Many of you have jobs um, and obviously have friends and family, too, that rely on you for various things. And so, you know, try to make a, a, a rough outline of the time and literally, Students tend to be more successful if they literally schedule their study time. Not, I'm going to study four hours today. I'm going to study from one to five. That's the type of uh, thing that you want to do. You know, uh, Think about the assignments, um, when they're due, and, and make sure to uh, get the ones that are due the earliest done first, right? Make sure you pay attention to, to those things. Um, also pay attention to point values, right? Hey, if two things are due the same day and one carries a point value of like two points, and one carries a point value of 100 points, right? Worry about the one that carries 100 points before the one that's worth two points, um, and so on. Uh, remember that your grade and overall uh, standing in the class is based on the quality of your work, not the quantity of your work. Yeah, you know what? To be competitive, you're probably going to have to do a lot of quantity. But it's also, you need to show something in the class in terms of your assignments and your assessments um, to deserve a high grade. Um, so, you know, start from the beginning. You know, now's the time to start studying efficiently and effectively. Be a professional. Right? Most of you are going to end up in professional programs down the line. Um, you're going to end up in professional careers. So start thinking like a professional and acting like one. Um, so here's the course objectives and lecture and lab term. You can read that. Here's the course calendar. Okay, and let me explain it really quick. So this one's the lecture schedule. All right. Um, so week one on 823, uh, you're theoretically supposed to finish um, E1, P1. So that's exam one, part one. So this is the first material. That's called the introduction. Um, and then E1, PX1, this is cells. Now you won't see this X very often. We only see it twice here and here. Um, where these are things from your prerequisite classes, right? I, I don't think we need to say, you know, Go over and lecture, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Yeah, it is, and you all know that, right? And so there is some information that I want you to know. So there's some review stuff for cells and some review stuff for chemistry. Uh, we'll do a little bit of more chemistry where we'll have lectures on. But for some of the basic stuff, um, we're just, you know, expect, you're expected to know it from the prerequisites. Um, and then you're also supposed to finish E1P2 for biomolecules. So the X... Um, means you're responsible for this material. There are some PowerPoints and information posted, but there is no lecture material like there are for other things. Okay? And then the next week, you're supposed to do E1P3, body systems, but you have both Monday and Wednesday to work on that. So, you know, you can follow, follow that. And then I have here the lecture topics based in the OpenStax book. Because OpenStax has 
so much anatomy in it, uh, like most anatomy physiology textbooks. Um, I have gone through and pulled out the various sections. So if you want to look at cells in the book, it's 3.1 and 3.2. Right? Chemistry, 2.1, 2.4. So that's what you would look up in the uh, anatomy and physiology OpenStax textbook uh, correlate. I also have a similar schedule, very similar to this one. That's for laboratory. So see right here, it's laboratory. Right? Uh, laboratory. And for this one, I have Q and L. All right? So up here, all right, we have E and P. Here, we have Q and L. So Q means quiz. Remember, the lab quizzes are only worth 25 points. So we call them quizzes instead of exams. And L just means lab. So quiz one, lab one, right? And then quiz one, lab two, and so on. Um, obviously, then, by going that, then what's on the first quiz would be L1, L2, L3, L4, and L6. Notice there is no L5. And then this material, right, is Q2, so that means this is on quiz 2, and then this is lab 7, 8 when you look in the book. So uh, this kind of shows the different things. And so here's the lab quiz. So this shows what we should be doing and things like that. Uh, here's an explanation of check updates, due dates, and grace period, penalty period. Okay. So what I've done here is here's all your Canvas checkups. Okay. So this is on both lecture and lab material. So checkup number one is due on 9-2. So on September 2nd, you should complete that. However, because it's an online assessment and I'm not too particular about when we do it, right? You can do it all the way through Sunday, September 5th, till the end of the grace period without any penalty. So you can take that any time between uh, the first day of class and September 5th and get full credit for it, okay? or potentially full credit for it, depending on how you score. Now, after the 5th up through the 7th, that's your penalty period. So that's when, um, if you took it at, finished at 1 a.m. on September 6th, then that would be an hour late because it's after the grace period. Okay? So you would lose a half a percent. If you took it 24 hours after, then you'd lose 12% because it would be 24 hours times a half a percent or 12% and so on. Do not live by the penalty period dates. Do not live even by the grace period end dates. Try to stay in the due dates. And again, notice that the due dates for all of our checkups are Thursday. And then the grace period ends on Sunday. And then the penalty period ends on Tuesday. Okay. This shows you what sections are on the checkup. So for checkup one, Right, it has E1, P1, E1, P2, E1, PX, E1, PX2, right, PX1, and then uh, labs one, two, and three. So, this is pretty big. As a matter of fact, the one that has the most material on it, right? So, this has both you know stuff from the first week and a little bit of the second, and then you see checkup two, which is due the week after, it has material and so on. So you know, that's nice to stay with the checkups. We also have homework and other checkup assignments. Um, we have an orientation checkup. Uh, that's really important. Uh, that's given on the first Monday in class. Okay. And you have to take it the first day to stay in the class. And it's just basically saying, hey, James, I'm enrolled and I'm staying in the class for now, at least. Um, and uh, I'll let you take it twice best score counts. So if you don't like your score on the first one, it's only five questions and they're really easy. Uh, most of the answers are found in the material for the course, like in the syllabus and stuff. If you don't like your score, right, you can take it again. Uh, but as long as you take it by the 11.59 on Sunday, August 29th, uh, you'll get whatever the highest score is. So you always get the highest score on these. Um, and I think I made all the checkups you get to take twice. High score counts. Right.
Um, there's also a take-home checkup that has information, uh, a whole bunch of different information that uh, I need uh, turned in on Wednesday, September 1st, although I gave a grace period through Sunday. All right. So notice that this Sunday, right, on September 5th, you have checkup one due as well as take home checkup one, right? So it's going to start to pile up if you wait until the last day um, because this is due on Wednesday, this is due on Thursday. So I try not to make them do the same day, but the grace period, not what you can do. Here's our exams. Right, and so you can see all those are on Wednesdays, right? There, so there's no grace period, there's no penalty penalty period, because you can only take these between uh, 10 a.m. and you must finish them by 11:59 p.m. on those days. Here's our lab quizzes, right? Here's the dates, same idea. Here's one the pre are due, the pre 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 preparatory report exercises, right? Uh, oh, look, Sunday 9-5. We saw that before. Sunday 9-5. Sunday 9-5. So on that grace period, right, you have all these things that are due on that grace period. So you don't want to wait until that Sunday to do it because it's a lot of work. Um, so, you know, you want to start and get these done early. And then the PRE or pre-3, 4, and 5 are due the week after. Uh, here's your laboratory date, right? You on 10-6, although I give you a grace period till 10-10. Physiology projects due on uh, papers due on Wednesday, the end of October, and then the first week, Wednesday in November, it's due. Uh, you get a grace period here. Uh, for this grace period for the physiology paper, note that's 10-31, that's Halloween. Um, some of you probably have kids or other commitments that you need to do for Halloween. So you want to make sure you get it done before that, right? Because you'll probably be busy. Uh, here's college dates that have to do with when is the last day to drop or take a W or get a refund. So you can read those. And then what I did is I sorted all of these by due date, right? So I put all of the things together that we just saw and sorted my due date. Um, and then I made it into a special uh, list and I call this the most important course calendar for our class right so again this is by due date so if you keep this you print this out right have a hard copy of this with you all the time and say okay what do I have to do and if you stay with these due dates you'll be fine the whole semester uh, notice this has a lot of things we saw a couple things do one nine five um no some things don't have a grace period because they're school related or some other function and then on the back of this i put um the lecture and lab topics on one sheet so if you had just this sheet with two sides you'd know when anything was due that had a point value these are everything this semester that has a point value that's due and on this one are all the labs or lectures that you're supposed to be working on um, during this time as well. So that's kind of the um, syllabus and the other information associated with it. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, uh, hopefully, you know, it's a lot of information. You get through it and you start to figure it out. It'll start to click uh, sooner than later, I'm sure.